Good evening, friends, and welcome to Sleepy Time Tales, a podcast aimed at helping you to get a good night's sleep. Do you find your mind plagued with the stresses of modern life, especially when the lights are out and you're trying to get a restful night? Does your spinning mind keep you awake? Follow my voice down the path towards a good night's rest. Listen to me tell a story that will keep your mind from wandering to your daytime problems. The ones you can't solve right now and will be easier to solve well rested. Listen to my voice and allow yourself to drift. Following the twists and turns of the story, but slowly letting go and drifting into sleep. Before we go any further, I need to have a little little bit of a chat to the more regular listeners. Are you finding that this show is helpful? Do you listen to a couple of nights a week or a couple of episodes a night? If you are, and if it's helpful, and if you have the means to provide a little bit of support, I'd like to ask you if you could take a look at signing up on the Patreon. I would like you to help me grow the show by giving me a little bit of support over there. My first priority is to do a little bit of an equipment upgrade. I want to just do a little bit to improve the sound quality. I'm doing basically as well as I can with what I have. And I'd like to do a little bit more. I'd like to respect my listeners. And I would like to think that if the sound quality was a little bit better, people coming across the show might uh, give it even more of a chance than they are. So if you can, and you would, can help me to do a little bit of an upgrade and cover my monthly costs, that would be very helpful. I uh, have to be honest, in the long run, I really would love to do this full time. I'd like to do more episodes and have the time to do more creative work. And I'm not going to be able to do that without a lot of help from you, the listener. If you have anything to spare, even if it's only a dollar a month, that does help. It can help me cover my fees, and even even at a dollar a month, there are some benefits for you, the listener. You will get a shout out on on the episodes. You get listed on the thank you page on the website, as well as the catnap episodes that I release for Radio Public will also be available to everyone who signs up on the Patreon, one dollar and up. So even for a dollar a month, you get an extra weekly bonus mini sode. If you can stretch yourself to $5 a month, you get all of that, plus you get promo-free and story-only edits of every episode every week. And as a bonus to new patrons, I'm going to run this probably up till the end of November, I'm going to send any any new $5 patron a handwritten postcard. I uh, picked up some really nice stuff today, really like, fun touristy things that I'm going to be sending off in the course of this week. So those of you waiting for them, uh, they are on their way by the time you hear this. I'm also, as a bit of an incentive as well, I'm going to try something a little bit unusual. If I reach $50 a month by the end of November, I'll do a bonus video episode for patrons. And then I will release the audio of that episode as a bonus episode, probably in January. So if you're interested in seeing my face tell a story, um, hopefully that's not off-putting to anybody. Um, come check it out at patreon.com slash sleepytimetales. The link is in the show notes. And sign up and join join those people who are already helping me to make ends meet and cover my costs and keep the show coming. If, however, you don't have any money to spare, and believe me, in this day and age, I understand not having any money to spare. You can sign up for a free Audible trial with my link audibletrial.com slash sleepytime that gives you a free audiobook to keep as well as a 30-day free trial of the Audible service as well as giving me a handy little kickback to, again, just sort of help cover some costs. As well as that, on Radio Public, you can listen to the Catnap episodes, the bonus mini episodes from around... 10 minutes to 15 minutes in length that I release every week. Uh, you can listen to those on Radio Public on the, because there I'm on the I'm on their paid listens program, which gives me very small amount of money for uh, every listen and a little bit of a something for everybody who listens to three episodes. 
So if you don't mind listening to my episodes with a with an ad and get a free bonus one as well, you can check it out. There are, as of now, 13 catnip episodes up there that are only available there in the Patreon. Patreon. So take a look. Last but not least, the music in this episode and all episodes thus far is Un Deserb Bakumiku. Their music is available on the free music archive. I've linked their websites and their Patreon in the show notes as there's some very cool stuff that they do under various different names that I recommend taking a look at. Thank you and back to the episode. So what exactly is Sleepy Time Tales? What is it for? It's a bit of a strange idea, isn't it? A podcast that you're supposed to fall asleep to. But the lack of sleep is a health crisis in the 21st century. And this is a podcast that is intended to help those that it can to get a restful night. Are you one of the many people these days who finds yourself lying awake, staring at the scene at ceiling with your mind spinning and your emotions in turmoil? Are the anxieties of 21st century life keeping you up at night? Do you wake up in the middle of the night and find yourself not quite able to go back to sleep at 3am? I'm here to help. My name is Dave, and I'm a narrator, here to help you into a restful night. Now, I'm someone who has struggled to sleep ever since I was a baby. My parents had sleepless nights with me for many years, and even once I got old enough not to bother them anymore, I always struggled to sleep. It was quite late in life that I discovered the tendency for droning male voices to act almost like a sedative for me. I found myself falling asleep listening to podcasts at night, and uh, Eventually, I discovered that it was something that there were people out there that were doing it on purpose. They were doing podcasts to help people sleep. I recommended one to other people that worked very well for me, but nobody I recommended it to really liked it. They didn't like the narrator's voice. So I thought to myself, I've got a boring, droney voice. Maybe I can do something to help some people get a good night's sleep. Every episode starts with this long intro. Now, it's the part of the show that not everybody likes, but it is really here for a reason. The, well, there's two reasons. The first one is, I need to explain the whole purpose of the show to your listeners. What is the show for, and why should you listen to it, and what is the point? And for all the listeners, this becomes the chance for them to sort of begin the process of getting ready to sleep. It's a bit of sort of part of the uh, almost ritual, the the habit forming of creating um, a restful mindset. The main thing is the purpose of this show and the purpose of this intro is to help us all to build a space together, a safe space for you to curl up into and go to sleep. There are a couple of different ways that I can think of to engage with this show depending on the sort of sleeplessness you have. For me, when I'm struggling to sleep, I need something to focus my mind on, a story or event that lets me keep my mind on a specific point so that it doesn't spin out into stress and anxieties. I need to focus just enough to not resist the embrace of a night's sleep when it comes creeping up on me. The second way that may work for some people is to just, um, may need a droning background a quiet sound, almost like a, some people need the sound of rain or the sea. Night story, I'm going back to something from the first season. I did one episode about a, a town populated entirely by wizards. And then I realized that I would sort of like, was in my mind, I was restructuring how to do the show. I thought I'd hold up, a, a keep a follow on for my second season. So this is the second episode. You don't need to go back and listen to the first one. It's nothing all that fascinating. It's a sort of mockumentary style story about a sort of day in the life of a town that happens to be populated by wizards. Um, yeah, like I say, you don't need to go back and listen to it. You can dig for it if you like, but this is will stand on its own. The main thing is, however you listen to the show, to the story, the main thing is you don't force sleep. Yeah, like I say, it's, it helps to just keep a light mental grip so that the need for sleep can creep up on you, basically, without your spinning anxieties keeping it away. 
Now, obviously, I'm hoping that you're asleep before I get to the end of the episode, but it's very important, especially if this is your first or second night with us, not to feel pressurized. It's it's very possible, in fact, probably even likely, that this won't work on the first night. Give it two or three nights to see if it works for you, and if it doesn't, then maybe it won't, and it's worth moving on to something else. But um, do try. Give it a little bit of a chance to work. I would hate to think someone would write it off too early and um, end up not benefiting from what I can do, because there are people out there who definitely do find it helpful. So it may not, it may not work on the first night. It may take a few nights for you. My accent may seem strange to you. Maybe one episode just isn't long enough. Queue up a couple and see how it goes. It is very important, though, that you try to relax. If you're new to the show and prone to late nights lying staring at the ceiling, it may take a while, even a few days, for this to work for you. So queue up a few episodes or just run through the backlog. What I usually do with my sleep podcasts is I let them stream all night. I lie down in the dark with my earbuds in and let them run. Sometimes even when I wake up at 3am, if they're still running, I just pop them, pop the earbuds back in because they've probably fallen out, and I let the voices waft me back to sleep again. There have been some times where I've woken up 30 minutes or an hour before my alarm, and I carry on listening and I fall back asleep again. That can be the most satisfying part of my night, because there's something about allowing yourself to relax right before the alarm that just is very deeply satisfying. And so you have the basic idea. You relax, and you lie in the dark, and while you do that, I tell you a tale. So relax, dear listener. My nighttime friend is elected to lie in the dark, listening to my voice. You will always be safe with me. I'm here to help you relax, to improve your life, to do, a small, do my small part, to help you in a big way, to get a good night's sleep, to make your life easier for you. I'm here to help you to face tomorrow and the day after, well-rested and better able to cope and process. I believe very strongly in the benefits of kindness. I want to be kind to you. I want to share kindness with you. I need you to be kind to yourself. It's possible that you're still going to be lying awake there, not not getting, uh, not being able to fall asleep. And it's very important that you don't get tense with yourself. Don't rebuke yourself or beat yourself up over not sleeping. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. If you're an insomniac, it's endemic. It's built into our bones almost. And getting frustrated is one of the greatest enemies of a good night's sleep. The point of this podcast is to short-circuit that frustration, the distracted feeling we get when we blame ourselves for not being able to let go and drift into the night. So take a breath, forgive the fact that you can't sleep, and let my voice wash over and under you. Take another breath. Imagine the warm darkness rising up, inviting you to sleep into a better life starting tomorrow. And if you can't let go, forgive yourself and try again tomorrow. If you've had a life of insomnia, sleep is something like an enemy. But it is not your enemy. It is a natural process that we've been pulled away from by stress and life, and supposed progress shining bright lights in our eyes at all hours. I'm here to work with you. To create a safe space. A cocoon in which you can curl up and allow nature to take its course. So if you're still with me, thank you for staying. If you're already asleep, we'll chat again soon. And of course, you aren't hearing me, except maybe in a dream. Good evening, friends, and welcome to the Mysteries of Life. My name is Trent Carrington, I'm your host. It's been a while since we left the town of Mutewallow. In fact, it was on a different show when I last hosted it. Unfortunately, they didn't appreciate the uh, whole mystical, magical angle, so I'm not going to mention that show ever again. And we're going to pick up now on the much more open-minded mysteries of life. It's been a while since we left the town of Mutwallow. Uh, I need to apologize that, well, getting fired was a major part of the delay. But it was also, there was a major part of the delay. We struggled to get back. 
but uh, not like a scheduling issue or anything like that. Unfortunately, we just literally couldn't find the town. Every time we left one of the neighboring towns to try to get back to come here, we found ourselves getting lost. There were about six or seven attempts of, attempts to get here. Even one time we left a, one of the neighboring towns, which is about three kilometers away that way. We drove out the one side of it that we know is on the way towards Mute Wallow, and we found ourselves immediately driving in the other side of that town again. It was uh, quite a strange process. It was almost like there was something in the town trying to keep us away. Now, we've managed to make to get, get here tonight, right up close to Halloween. So maybe, maybe the delay paid off. It's possible that the town of wizards would have a very interesting take on the Halloween celebration. Something not much like what um, we're used to in the uh, outside world. Halloween in Wizard Town seems like the perfect time to be back. So, once again, welcome, welcome back to Mute Wallow. We we haven't been or been here a while, so let me run through a little bit of the descriptions of the town again for those of you who missed our last episode. It's a very beautiful town, extremely picturesque and historic looking. There's a lot of very old-fashioned looking shops. There's no sign of any kind of chain stores or takeaways or any of that sort of thing. There's no McDonald's here for sure, or Burger King or anything of the like. This looks like the sort of town that keeps out bans cars from the city centre or something like that. Although last time we were here there were cars driving around, they just were unusual. People seem to have other ways to get around in this town. Uh, I suppose being a town with magic, uh, maybe people have flying carpets and uh, broomsticks. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe not. I'm honestly not too sure. It's a lot quieter than it was last time we were here. I, to be honest, I expected a little bit more activity. Last time we were here, there were a lot of animals going around, unattended creatures, including a rather charming badger that we met. Those are familiars for the wizards and witch witches, I guess, uh, and magicians that live in town. A lot of them have these animal familiars that they send to do their bidding. Uh, I suppose they're busy with all their studies. This town, after all, is intended as a sort of study haven for magicians to work uninterrupted from concerns from the outside world. In fact, uh, I have a feeling that that was why we struggled to get back here. This place is um, not exactly a secret, but it is secretive, and uh, they don't like being interrupted unnecessarily. Although I was invited here last time, I don't know why it was such a struggle to get back. So we're walking around now. Earl, uh, sorry folks, this is Earl, my new cameraman. Um, he replaced Frank, who after the third time we tried to come to Mute Wallow, um, quit. He decided... Um, he didn't want to carry on driving around in circles trying to find something that, even though he was here and he filmed it, started to sort of lose his grip on reality a little bit. So I'm not too sure exactly what that was about. I think um, just the whole driving around in circles and not being able to tell time or date for a, uh, a good few time attempts to get here sort of threw poor Frank off. He's a good man and a good cameraman, and I wish him all the best. No, Earl's a steady fellow who doesn't seem to um, get flustered very much. So, Earl, thank you very much for joining us. Earl, just keep your camera running as we head up towards the mayor's office here. Okay, as everyone, you can see up to the right there, there's uh, the uh, town of City Hall where the mayor's office is. We're going to go in. Let's just stop, and stop for a second and just admire the carving around the doors here. This is a very ornate carvings here. They look like runes and sigils of sorts. I guess this is a town full of magicians. They must be must be wards or that sort of thing. Seems sensible, I guess. I mean, we're in a town with magic. Sensible to go out the window. Long since we get, we uh, long since since we got here. Okay, and there's a lot of activity here now. I guess everyone's um, doing their preparations at home, or wherever they're preparing for the parade. 
there's a lot of civil servants uh, a lot of them don't look like magicians they dressed ordinarily most of the magicians seem to be even if they don't dress like Gandalf most of them have a little something interesting a hat or fancy wand or staff or something to make them seem magical there's quite a few people here that just seem to be ordinary people at least dressed like them everyone's busy oh no oh so many phones ringing for some reason i didn't expect magicians to have to use their phones so much kind of thought they would just like talk to each other telepathically but then again i guess not all of these people are magicians okay we're gonna go head up the mayor's office there we go uh, he's in the board in the conference room there let's go poke ahead in Hi, Mayor. Yes, it's Axel Findom. Yes. Um, <laughs> you're surprised to see us. Well, why? We were invited here last time. We said we'd be back. Oh, you forgot to give us an invitation to come back, so we, in theory we shouldn't have been able to find our way back. Yeah, well, to be honest, it was a bit of a struggle. I've been trying to get back here for about six months now. It was uh, quite disconcerting. I lost the cameraman to that. Yes, you remember Frank. Yeah, this is Earl. Well, you, you do seem happy to see us. Oh, you did want us to come back, just you... Well, yeah, I guess um, being a, a magician and a mayor, you probably got a little bit sidetracked about giving us the invitation. So folks, as you can see, it takes all day is uh, hard at work, talking to his deputy mayor and a few other people from the city council. Last time we saw him, he was dressed pretty much the same. I don't think it's the same clothes, but... He dresses like a rambler, like someone who's going to go for a long walk in the walk in the across a few fields at any point. Except for the hat, which he's not wearing now. I wonder where that is. Take a look around here. Oh, there you go. There's a robe on a hanger there. Wow, that is gorgeous. It's uh, shimmering. It's going blue and red and purple and orange and green and pink. So many colors, it's, it's magnificent. I mean, it's just hanging there stationary and it's, it looks like it's alive. I wonder what it's going to look like when he's wearing it and walking around. It's got stars on it, but not like, not like star stars. It looks like real stars moving around in constellations. A couple of shooting stars. That is incredible. And there's his hat next to it. It looks like it's had a little bit of repair. It was looking a bit shabby last time we saw it. Oh, yes, Mayor. Thank you for taking time to speak to us. So, Mayor Findom, I want to ask you about the Halloween celebrations that uh, your town your town takes part in. Obviously, this time of year is quite quite big across most of the world. It's a very commercialized holiday, obviously, but it seems to be very much in the spirit of what you folks do here. So, I'm wondering if it's a, a big deal here. It looks like it is. The town was quiet. No one was around, and you all seem to be very busy with preparations for tonight. Uh, so you folks don't call it Halloween here, you call it All Hallows Eve. That's now very interesting. What are the celebrations? What do you do? It must be quite a spectacular event here. So you say it's much like the outside world, the regular world. Trick-or-treaters. Oh uh, yeah, the children go around and collect sweets. Flying witches. Oh, but the witches are actually real, not just uh, fake witches, of course. People dressed like skeletons are a big thing here, I guess. Of course, of course, of course. Oh, and also real skeletons walking, real skeletons walking around. That doesn't seem very safe. Isn't it dangerous? Undead, perambulating dead. Oh, they're completely harmless, you say. The, the necromancers that raise them, completely keep them, keep them completely under control. What if the necromancers are dangerous? I mean, necromancy seems like a bit of a potentially a bit of a dangerous uh, type of magic. Oh, it is. Oh, of course. Yes. Well, thank you for being so honest about that. Oh, uh, but everyone who gets approved to live here is trustworthy. So there are necromancers out in the outside world who are not trustworthy? 
well, that's a little bit disconcerting and concerning. What happens if they get out of control? Um, generally speaking, their skeletons and zombies turn on them and disappear and stop working. Um, okay, I don't know if that's uh, comforting or not, but I guess it's something. I've got to say, I've learned some very interesting stuff since I've started coming here. Some things I think I would have preferred not to know, to be honest. Um, okay. So you have real skeletons, you have real witches flying on broomsticks. Um, and there's no danger involved, well, except for when witches get a little bit too drunk and crash. Okay, no, I can understand that. Is it only witches that fly on broomsticks? No, you sort of use the term witch is gender neutral, so it could be men or women. Most people don't like being called wizards. Men would rather be called witches. Okay, that's interesting. I'm going to criticize how people want to call themselves, but that is almost exactly not how we thought things would go. Fascinating. i got to say, um, Mr. Mayor, that there are so many things about this town that are amazing and about your culture, your people's culture. I don't even know how to talk about it. Your the uh, wizard world that is both strange and strangely not strange, if that makes any sense. Sort of sense that everyone here is very unusual and very special, but all very regular and ordinary in their own way. I suppose people are people, even if they can shoot fire out of their fingers. So what what is trick-or-treating like here? In... Do the kids, I mean, do children egg houses if somebody doesn't give them candy? I mean, it seems a little bit uh, risky to egg the house of a witch. Uh, they don't egg in toilet paper houses. Of course, the children are magical as well. So what sort of tricks do they do? Uh, you give, um, Mr. Potts last year gave them children fruit and found his house filled with frogs. That sounds extremely unpleasant. Were they real frogs? Oh, they were an illusion, okay. Somebody else had the house filled with actual crocodiles, though. Now that sounds a little bit dangerous. But those children got into trouble. Uh, okay, yeah, that sounds... I suppose discipline in the wizarding world might be a little bit a tricky situation. How do you discipline children that can uh, manipulate reality? I'm sure you have ways, I can believe that. And the uh, sweets that the children are given, are they magical sweets? Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. I know this isn't Harry Potter. Okay, so feeding children magical sweets would be dangerous. Of course, so you just give them regular sweets, like candy bars and chocolates and gums. Okay, all right. So I guess it, some things in um, some things in your world seem to be pretty in line with uh, a lot of the fantasy stories. Uh, seem kind of logical that there'd be magical sweets, yeah, but um, completely makes sense that eating a whole lot of magical items once a year probably would not be very good for you uh, in the short term or long term. So other than the real flying witches, which sometimes crash when they have a little bit too much to drink, and the frogs and crocodiles and uh, real skeletons, which are apparently not at all dangerous, what are the other differences are there between a regular Halloween celebration and all Hallows, per Hallows here in Mute Wallow? Oh, you have a parade. That's interesting. Yeah, no, Halloween parades are not really a thing in many places, I think. So you have a parade with um, who, who parades. Uh, the different schools and houses, okay, the different families all. And then you get floats pulled by skeletons and zombies. Interesting. Spirit powered floats as well. Okay, it must be quite a quite a sight to see. Okay, all right. And then at the end of the parade, there's the ritual. Wait, the ritual. What ritual? You just sort of glossed over that. Well, I suppose. Uh, yeah, of course. A matter of perspective, I think. To me, a ritual seems unusual. To you, a ritual is something you do pretty much every day, and this particular one you do every year. So, what is the ritual? Oh, so you folks uh, summon a mind elemental to protect the town. That's what keeps people out if they're not actually explicitly invited. 
okay, all right. And then that and then that explains it gets weaker over the course of a year and gets quite weak towards All Hallows. So that's how we actually managed to get here today. We were lucky we happened to decide to make the trip for Halloween because pretty much everybody t taken the long weekend. Okay, so we just happened to come here on the one day of the year where the protection is at its weakest, and because we were here before, we were somewhat welcome, even if not all that welcome. Okay, now well, that's interesting. And now, because we're going to be in the town during the ritual, we can come and go as we like. Oh, now that is amazing. So we're not going to have that uh, situation where we, uh, we drive any more crew members crazy by driving uh, around in circles around a place that we can see on a map. Okay, I'm very happy to hear that. Pretty Frank isn't here today. Yeah, I think he would have actually appreciated being able to come and go. He really did enjoy the last time here, but uh, he didn't deal very well with um, the very mind-bending, weirdly mind-bending situation of trying to get back here. So the mind elemental protection weakens over the course of a year, and you need to do a ritual to summon a new one. All right then. Okay, well, let's uh, head out now. We'll go watch the parade. We're here now at the um, town common. The really beautifully trimmed meadow, lovely flower beds all around. The bandstand in the middle there. And we've got uh, an amphitheater. The amphitheater itself is quite unusual. It's not like bleachers like you would probably expect. It's uh, built out of stone, and it looks a few thousand years old. I suspect this town was built on or around a very important ancient location. There's uh, fountains there, the four cardinal points, and the uh, statues and the uh, secondary points around the compass. I get the feeling, hmm. now I dabbled with... Uh, Paganism, when I was younger, this definitely has the feel of a ritual space. Didn't notice last time we were here, because it was daytime and there was bustling activity. But now, as everyone's filing in, looking very calm and quiet and preparing for the parade, there's a very different sense here now. The energy is uh, definitely up. It's, uh, it feels, feels alive here in a way that didn't last time we were here. Okay, so here comes the parade. There's a bunch of skeletons. Okay, this is really rather freaky, I have to say. These walking skeletons playing flutes. Obviously, they're not actually blowing the flutes. The flutes are playing themselves, because skeletons don't have lips or lungs, so that wouldn't really work. And then here come interesting-looking spirit creatures. I can't really... My eyes just sort of roll off them. I can't actually look at them directly. They were playing drums. This whole situation is rather disconcerting. And then some beautiful floats, brightly lit, fireworks going off. Yet strangely, can't hear the fireworks. Or they, if they go off, they're playing music. Okay. It's a um, fairly small parade, but quite interesting while it lasted. There was um, most of the people we met from last time, they all had their own floats. The alchemist lady came past, gave me a wave, that was nice. Okay, so now everyone's, all the wizards are coming in. Most of the spirits that were playing the drums seem to have dispersed. Skeletons have all wandered into the forest. I uh, wonder what they're going to do there. Very strange. Okay, so that they've all gone out. All the wizards now are around in the amphitheater. A Texel, who normally looks rumpled and bookish in the times I've seen him before, is wearing his beautiful robe and he is looking magnificent. This man looks... Forget Gandalf and Lord of the Rings. Sorry, uh, Ian McKellen. This, this man is um, quite a sight to behold. In his glowing, shining robe and his hat with the stars on it, just flashing like a, I want to say like a disco ball, but that doesn't sound as graceful as it looks. He's holding his arms up and he's starting to chant. Can't quite make out the words. 
Let's, okay. Oh, can you get a... Well, what's wrong? Is the camera giving you trouble? Let me have a look. You say the camera is glitching. Oh, no. What is happening now? This is so important. Oh, okay. All right, folks. Sorry about that. Camera cut out, and it's just cut, started running again. Um, obviously, there seemed to be some sort of energy in the air that prevented the camera from operating during the ritual. Um, I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised. It was, um, it was quite a moving ceremony, I have to say. Nothing too outrageous, but I think the cameras just didn't, couldn't operate with all the magical energy around. The um, girl seems, says the picture seems unusually clear. I don't know how you can tell through his viewfinder, but... Um, okay, sorry, I'm looking a little bit... Uh, a little bit um, off balance here. This whole ritual was quite a thing, I have to say. I can't really explain to you too closely what happened. Um... There's no sense that I'm not allowed to, but it just seems almost beyond words. The, the local folks all dispersed to the eight corners of the common. They were all chanting different things in turn. The, the musical instruments that had been played earlier by skeletons and spirits and whatever else uh, were playing them playing themselves by the look of it was almost um, shamanic somehow. I don't even know how to put it into words. It was beautiful. Uh, there was chanting. There was the music. The spirits from the parade reappeared, and so did the skeletons. They were all, all sort of dancing and taking part in the ritual. The bandstand, the stage, lit up from as if from nowhere. Was a giant glowing figure that was standing, towering over all the people on the stage. Um, at first, it seemed like a feminine figure, like a tall woman with long blonde hair. But when I say tall, I mean like a couple of stories tall. She was massive. But then I wasn't too sure if it was a female figure. It seemed to sort of change. Or maybe my perspective changed. Maybe it was beyond my understanding, it was whatever it was, male, female, both, neither, it was just magnificent, I'd never seen anything like it. A text all magnificent, but along with the other senior wizards, seemed really tiny compared to, compared to this uh, mind elemental. They bowed and fed some kind of power to the spirit, and they asked it for protection for another year. I see, I kind of assumed when they said they were going to summon an elemental that it was going to be some kind of bonding ceremony. But it seems like it was a transactional process. It was like the spirits is willingly agreeing to pr protect them in return for something from them. I think, uh, I think they provide it with some kind of power, some kind of energy to enable it to, to enable it to do its job and to keep it interested in long enough to keep it in one place. I think actually it kind of enjoys watching people now that I think about it. I think it um, basically sits and observes what goes on as a way to keep it in touch with uh, something. I'm not too sure. It's almost as if it needs to retain some kind of grip on humanity. But they asked it for its protection for another year. Spirit spread its hands in a benediction. And everybody felt the warmth of the spirit. Even I did, even Earl here did. So we know that we're going to be welcome and allowed to come back again because the spirit is... The last spirit didn't know us, that's the thing. And we were given a temporary invitation. It kept us out every time we tried to get back. Now the spirit knows us and every other person in the town. So we can come and go as we please from now on. Um... I think this is all I can deal with for tonight. We'll see you again in a few weeks. This is Trent Carrington on Mysteries of Life, reporting from Mute Wallow. Thank you and good night. Thanks again for joining me on this episode of Sleepy Time Tales. 
the podcast are designed around a bedtime story to help you to get a restful night. New episodes will be released every Sunday night to give you something fresh to help you rest in a new week. But make sure to subscribe in whatever service you use so that you get new episodes whenever they come out. A reminder that the music for tonight is Un Désert Book Miku. Check out more of their work on their website and their Patreon, which you'll find linked in the show notes. Good night and sweet dreams.